Hello everyone, this is Michael Okechuku Lovenger, the creator of Michael Lovenger Speaks and the father of Tio Ominosis. Welcome to my YouTube channel that offers you seven different topics every week of the day. We have Deliverance Ministry, Love and Romance, Health Factors, Born Again Identity, Ministerial Admonition, Matrimonial Admonition, and the Human Heart Cast. We are here to give you the best because we are the best. Once again, I pray that the Lord God Almighty will bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are welcome to Matrimonial Admonition Season 11. The Lord just Speaks welcomes you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We thank you for the YouTube community. We thank you for our audience. We thank you for everyone, our partners. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will have your way. Let your name be glorified in this moment. And I pray that you will heal people's marriages through this admonition. Help us to remember that you are the author of matrimony and that you have to fix it all remedy for every faulty matrimony. Lord, I pray, may you have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, you are welcome. Matrimonial Admonition Season 11. Okay? And today we are going to have the frustrated husband. Number three. And in this number three, we are going to have the remedy number one. The remedy number two is certainly coming. Uh, maybe that is where we are going to end everything about uh, the frustrated husband. Well, I just wrote it, frustrated husband. It is a kind of open, all right? Okay, in the beginning, when we encounter the frustrated husband, we got him in the Bible book of Isaiah chapter 5, when um, someone, um, a, poet, a poet, okay, was singing about his beloved, okay? Say her beloved uh, had a vineyard. Okay, you can go there and read all those things again. But the 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 cardinal fact in that place is that uh, this beloved planted hmm, on a very fertile ground a, a, a choice uh, grape. Took care of the vineyard, did everything. Okay, but during the harvest time, instead of that grape, sweet grape to give according to its fruits. The grape gave contrary, they gave bitter fruit. That is, the harvest was contrary to the expectation, to what has been planted. And so the beloved, the husband man said that he is going to destroy the farm. Alright? Like so many people today have decided that they, they, the only solution to their marriage is divorce. Uh, when we come to African culture, <laughs> oh God, I got to have mercy. In the Western world, like in American civilized, last time I told you that uh, the more civilized a country becomes this day, the more the uh, number of divorce, the, the, the higher their rate of divorce. American as an uh, example, and Canada, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> mm. You see, people who get married today in the next uh, six hours, they are already heading to the, mm -hmm, to the court of law on divorce. I want out. I want out. Mm. And mind you, they got married. The man is now coming to the third marriage. And uh, the woman is coming now into the fourth marriage. The, uh, the uh, respective marriage partner are still alive. Oh, mm. oh God. <laughs> oh, God, have mercy on America. I have a say on worse and Africa because Africa's own is even worse. You may not understand. The reverse seems to be the case. But I'm an Africa. Let me tell you what is going on here, okay? All right? Because the American, they will say, ah, oh, African, they, they enjoy good marriage. Uh, not exactly. Let me tell you the way African people, they divorce. Because um, some um, legalism 
and the African culture, like um, um, Igbo land, my ethnic group in the Western country of uh, uh, Africa and Nigeria, Eastern part, uh, my ethnic group is, it is an abomination in Igbo land, okay, for a woman to leave the husband's home and come back to the patana, to the biological home. Mm. Oh, no, 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 through Igbo people. Through Igbo people, I say through. That is a real Igbo people. Oh no no, they won't. They will not accept that woman. Huh? You dare not come back. If your husband is beating you, a kind of they, they may come for negotiation to plead the case. Okay, they may tax the husband. There are some youth in the community. Many things can be done to the husband. <laughs> but uh, woman, wife, oh my God. No, you are no longer part of our family. You've been married, you've been married for life, for life. Uh, there's nothing like that. Just go back to your husband's house. Go and humble yourself under the hand of your husband. And then again, generally in the Christian community, the Lord God Almighty say, I hate divorce. I hate divorce. I hate divorce. So, once married, mm, for a lifetime, married. But mind you, this is according to the written word of God. This is according to Old Testament, New Testament, okay? Okay, even sometimes the Old Testament seem to contradict what I just said, but the New Testament seem to reinforce what I just said, that once you are married, you are for a lifetime married. Cons better, cons worse, you are married. But mind you, this is according to Old Testament and then New Testament. But when we come to what I call the contemporary testament mm -mm. the lord god almighty uh, 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 can allow people to die for in fact sometimes he himself can separate two legally do i say legally legally married okay legally married in the eyes of men but in the eyes of god they are not not legally married they we are never even married in the first place okay do not be deceived into thinking that people, they come to the holy sanctuary and the man of God will stand like myself, I'm a pastor, okay? And so then maybe I'll stand now and say, I pronounce of your husband and wife. And that doesn't mean that these people, they are married in the eyes of God. I am telling you. So now, when you come to my community, this is not because of all this that I've just mentioned. And you know, we are, no, not we. And in our community, in our part of the world, people are overly religious. They know how to uh, keep the law, obey the, the rules and regulations, they keep the ordinances, okay? Fine, that's good, okay? Now, this is how they divorce. They will divorce and then they will still live together, okay? <laughs> no, you don't understand it. You don't understand it. But let me ask you, when a husband can no longer touch the wife, like, he no longer care about making the wife smile or making the wife happy. Don't even touch the wife in a kind of to give her serious satisfaction. Except when he, the man, want to... Oh God. Only when he, the man, wants to. And then, in the other hand, the wife will say, Oh, I am. I have a headache. I know where. Well. I am seeing my woman something. My woman something is uh, in parenthesis and, okay, is uh, in the um, uh, menstrual period. But she's lying. Just because she's not in the mood. Why? Because the husband has made her angry. Okay? Or how do you describe a situation like in the place where I am presently operating from? When it is the, the part of the culture. <laughs> Extramarital is part of the culture. <laughs> and that, Oh God. <laughs> Extramarital is part of the culture. The husband will know that the wife is doing extramarital, and the wife will know the husband is doing extramarital. No, everybody is cool about it. Hmm. Oh, the daughter and the, and the and the and the mother will be struggling for a singular man. <laughs> it's part of the culture. Oh hmm. God! And then in this place where I'm talking about, it is permissible for a woman to come back from the husband's home. The people will welcome her. But remember, previously I told you in the real. In the real Igbo culture, it is an abomination. I've heard so many things have been civilized in our culture. So, this is what we are talking about. So, this is what the husband man said that he was going to do the, to the vineyard. 
All right? Divers. All right. I pray that God will have mercy on us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, be warned. The Lord just speaks. It's not liable for any divers. <laughs> because I said that the, the contemporary ten, uh, uh, testament can allow people. What do I mean by contemporary testament? When you hear from the Spirit of the Most High God what He said now, not what is written in the Holy Bible. That's not what I'm saying. So I'm saying when I say contemporary, what God is saying to you today. Today is just the um, the the is it the sixth or the seventh day of um, the month of September. Mm. 2022. So you have a particular issue and you pray and ask God, what do you want me to do? And God will say, this is what I want you to do. Now, this contemporary testament, most of the time will contradict the written word of God, both the New Testament and the Old Testament. So this is the only ground for you to do what? To put away your marital partner. <laughs> do not say that I said, that I said that you should do. No, I'm not responsible for any I was okay. I'm just here to tell you what you ought to know. Okay. So today we are talking about this frustrated husband. Is there a solution to any failed marriage? Failed marriage. Is there a solution? Certainly there is solution for God. Say, I am the resurrection and the life. And what does that mean? Jesus came at the tomb of Lazarus. <laughs> there was no hope anymore. But he brought him back to life. So God is the life. God is the fountainhead of life, the source of our life. And so when he comes on the scene, even though life has ceased, life will continue to flow. So God is the author of a godly matrimony. If the foundation of your marriage is, um, is laid on God, that marriage cannot fail. It cannot fail. Even today, that marriage can be resurrected. It can be revived when you bring it to the auto. Like when you have your or have more functionality in your automobile, or even anything that is engineered by a human being, you go and see the specialist and they will fix it. You have a robot. Robotics, they are there. They will fix it. <laughs> you have your your Apple product. You go there, they will fix it. You have your Samsung, everything. You have ailments and in your physical body. You go to the hospital, they will fix you. Even if it is an internal, eh, physiological, okay. They are there. The, the surgeon, they can fix you. Okay? So God is the, the engineer of marriage. So if your marriage has problems today, I want you to bring it to God. And I want to initiate the first step. First of all, you have to give your life to Jesus. I am not... I, I don't have time to ask you whether you are born again, whether you believe in God or not. No. You have acknowledged that eh, your marriage has failed and you want it to be fixed so that you have ailment in your hand, you don't cut your hand off, but you go to the chemist, you go to the physician, they fix you. So this your marriage now have a kind of matrimonial ailment. You don't cut it off by divorce. You need somebody to fix it, okay? Huh. All right, you have to acknowledge that you need help. That acknowledgement is what I want you to do by giving your life to Jesus. Jesus is the author and the finisher of everything good. He is the owner of marriage. He alone can fix your marriage. How do you do that? You don't have to pray with your spouse. Pray. Ask God. Even though you don't know how to pray because you belong to another religion, I will help you. It is very open. Just call the name of Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, who died for my sin, who rose and lived again for my eternal life, 
who made me his own image and likeness, who forgives sin, please forgive us and come and take control of our marriage. Help us so that our marriage will be fixed. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. So, if you say this prayer, good, you have taken your marriage to the physician. And uh, mind you, the work is already started. You might be surprised at what will happen. I am telling you, God is miraculous and mysterious at the same time. <laughs> He's a miracle, God. You can never understand Him. He's a pillar of cloud by the day, pillar of fire by the night. He will give you exactly what you need. What you need. What you need. Whatever is it that is lacking, that is found wanting in your marriage, he is going to supply. Do not think about it is already night. Do not think about it is already day. No. God will bring what you need according to the season. He is the God of the mountain and God of the valley. God of the spring, the fall, the autumn, the winter, the summer, whatever. Every, all the calendar season of the, of the year. God is available in every situation. Having acknowledged Him, He has taken control of your marriage. Okay? Now, I advise you, what I just told you now is from the Holy Bible. Pick up the Holy Bible and begin to read. Begin to read. God, the Spirit of God will direct you where you are supposed to read. Because I am not here to give you Bible quotations. Okay? No. But if you want that, you can reach me through the comment section. Okay? So, what am I trying to say? remedy for the frustrated man this frustrated man decided to end the marriage but there is a remedy and that is what we are here to talk about all right first of all we acknowledge something from the bible book of matthew i don't know how much time we still have oh my god all right let's see how far we can go but we'll still come back for the second part of the remedy okay in Matthew chapter, remember that last time I told you that eh, one of the possible reasons for the crop not giving according to the, expected, uh, the expectation of the husband man or giving something contrary to what had been planted is because of eh, incompatibility of the seed and the negligence of the husband man. I use the journey of the people of Israel to explain that God gave them the law. And then God took them to a land, though flowing with milk and honey, but they were overwhelmed. They were outnumbered by the unbelievers. Go and listen to the frustrated man, season two. You will see the comparison, and the, the comparison is perfect. Okay? Oh, okay. Perfect. Fine. Perfect is an English language. I mean, the comparison defeats um, each other. Also, so incompatibility of the seed that means that the people of Israelite who have been given the law to obey God, God gave them the law. But the people that uh, they, they are in the, in, in the midst or in the same like, country, it, they are doing it exactly the opposite of what God commanded them to do. So they are not compatible at all. And then negligence is this way is that, eh? hmm. <laughs> negligence is that. Eh? God gave them judges, but those judges, many of them are not godly. Many of them even contributed to the fall of the people of Israelites. Many of them contributed to the fall. It is true that God will empower them. In the beginning, they will do fine. They will do well. But uh, after they have read the, uh, the epitome of their career, like, like when they have started to succeed in the warfare and the battle, they will begin to go astray. They will come under the influence of the anti-God kingdom, the, the territorial spirit of the land. So in this manner, they were neglected. The judges could not lead them aright. Can you see it? So incompatibility of the seed and the negligence of the man contributed to the fact that the seed did not yield according to what is planted. All right. I am not saying that God neglected them, okay? I am just making comparison. God gave them over to ungodly land and gave them over to men who cannot be trusted. And who can be trusted? No man can be trusted at that time, all right? 
So, and they could not obey the law. So in this manner now, when God looked at them, God came around to harvest fruit of righteousness. But uh, he was getting something to the contrary. He saw bestiality, human being and animal making do, man and woman, homosexuality, extramarital, premarital, every manner of theft, murder, bloodshed, and God was angry. God said, I am going to destroy you people. And hmm, let me hold the next speech. So let's also read, take our first reading. We are still analyzing what happened. Remember, when God created Adam and Eve, He planted a righteous seed, according to Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Look at what the Bible says in that place. Another parable He put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while man slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain has sprouted and produced a crop, then the tars also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tars? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tars, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest day. That's 30. This is where I'm going to stop. Okay, the first line in 30. When you have time, you can read through. Okay. What am I trying to say? The good man is God. The good seed so was Adam and Eve. He said, but why man, why men slept? Mm. Why men slept? What does that mean? Carelessness of Adam. Carelessness of Adam. Satan went through his blind side. Adam neglected the woman. <laughs> I told people in matrimonial admonition. Do not allow a woman to lead because when their menstrual cycle. <laughs> <laughs> No, let me, let's not talk about this you now. But uh, Adam neglected his, his duty. And then an enemy came and saw something in the life of Eve. And that was Ta. So, the Ta grew up with the, with the wheat. How, does, how did that work out? The sons that were made through the blood of Abel, who was crying from the ground. <laughs> um, you don't even know the rest. You don't even. Oh, should I say this thing here? Now let me tell you because here and we are talking about a mystery. Okay. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? There are only two people here on the planet Earth. No, we will have the census now. We have. 8.7 billion that will last them um, last seven years i don't have the economy okay the average now 8.6 billion people here on the planet earth okay everybody but let me tell you do not be deceived that's not true we have only two people here on the planet earth we are not talking about gender we're not talking about man and woman we're talking about human being we have only two people here on the planet earth and they are what the bible called the first man adam and the last man jesus christ the two people here on the planet earth are jesus christ of nazareth and adam that man that was created in the garden of eden what does that mean oh god let me tell you one day we'll talk about this. I invented a concept. Have I said it here? Have I said it here? No, not here. A concept I call theoomniosis. Theoomniosis is the origin and the presence of God in every creation. The origin of God and the presence of God in everything that is created. God is present in the angel, in Lucifer, in the stone, in the flower, in the fish, in the mosquito, in the ant, in the rock, in the animate and inanimate objects. Nothing can exist 
outside God. Okay? So, what am I trying to say? People, we are made from blood. It is the blood of Adam and Eve that was used to make Cain. To make Cain. It was the blood of Cain that was made to that was used to make Tuba Cain. Or what was the name of that Cain? <laughs> the son of Cain in the Bible. I can't remember exactly. Now, Cain, before Cain died, he killed his brother Abel. But mind you, human beings don't die. Blood don't die. Because God said, God was not speaking in parable. He said, the blood of your brother is speaking to me, crying to me from the ground. It was the blood of that righteous Abel that was used to create the next son of Adam and Eve. Ah, God help me. Okay? What was the name of that son, Enoch? If I make a mistake in that regard, forgive me, but read the Bible. You will see the next son of Adam and Eve. He was made from the blood of Abel. So every human being here, you are either made of the blood of Adam and Eve, or you are either made of the blood of Jesus, the son of the Most High God. So, he said that the good man, I am still trying to explain the righteous sin, the wheat and the tar. Alright? I am expecting the wheat and the tar. He said that them, the, 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 the master planted a good seed. The good seed was planted first. That was Adam and Eve. Okay? But uh, before they would produce after their kind, their seed was corrupt. Alright? But because Abel was a man of faith, he, his faith was counted to him as righteousness. Alright? So he was a righteous man. So from his blood, the next son of Adam and Eve was made, and from that son, subsequent people, subsequent people, reaching to you and I today, you can either be a wheat, the good seed, that is if you are a child of God, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I told you, I will continue to say it, irrespective of your religion, you still need to subscribe to Christianity because Jesus died for everybody. Okay? Buddha did not die for anybody. Muhammad did not die for anybody. Okay? Vishnu, uh, Braha, or whatever name you, the, the, you reference in your religion. None of them died for the whole world. Even when they claim that they are dying for their fellow ones, they did not die for the whole world. Jesus died for the whole world. Okay? And now, that is the most perfect way for people to have access to God. Alright? Mind my word, the perfect way. It is all about comparison. When you compare to this one, certainly is better. Jesus died for everybody. Now, let me go on. You are a wheat. That is the good seed. If you have given your life to Jesus. But you are a tar. If you are not giving your life to Jesus. But now, the master said, do not uproot them. So, he said, allow Cain. And allow the sons of Adam and Eve. Sons of Adam and Eve to grow. <laughs> Read the Bible, you see what Lamech, Lamech married more than one wife, and to God kingdom, and to God practice, and he killed a man, because the man blasphemed his name, his pride was injured, <laughs> his ego was eh, bruised, and he killed a man, he came back and confessed to the wife. So, from there you can see the generation of men, they began to multiply. So, there are only two men here. The good seed and the tar. So God is saying, allow them to grow together until the harvest day. That was Matthew chapter 13 for you. Okay? So, that was how, even before God take them to the promised land, info people they were already there. So, God did not kill them in one day. And so, these people, they were influenced. And so, their fruit were corrupt. Instead of bringing out sweet fruit, they were bringing bitter fruit, contrary to the law that God gave to them. May God have me so not send the mighty name of Jesus.
Amen. Now, the last place I want us to read is uh, let's go to the Bible book of uh, Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 13. Let us see what the Bible has for us therein. Luke, Luke chapter 13. From. Uh, from from verse 6 eh? he also spoke this parable a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none hmm. then he said to the keeper of his vineyard look for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none cut it down why does it use up the ground <laughs> Can you see? Like some people will just rationalize. I have been doing everything good for this woman, but this woman has been playing extramarital. Or the woman will say, I have loved my husband. I am ready to sacrifice my life for my husband. I have done everything to please this man. But this man he doesn't love me. He's even playing extramarital. He doesn't give me attention at all. Oh no, he's even married to uh, a second wife. Or the man will say, ah, this man, this woman is going into polyandry. Or uh, just that's trying to take another husband, okay? Now, I am going to do what? The man, the man say, cut this tree off because he has not been able to give me a desired fruit. Cut it down. Cut it down. That is what? Divorce. Even your people, your kinsmen will say, leave this woman alone. This woman has not been able to give you a, 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 a baby girl a baby boy like in african culture people they are suckers for baby boys babies boys that's my english okay fine what do i mean by that they crave they prioritize male children so this is an allocation for divorce in many african culture because the woman has been producing only female children <laughs> the man will put her away and it has been legalized or the man will marry a second wife a third wife, a fourth wife and this has been legalized so this man in the Bible said cut this tree off but the servant said no please give it a little time so I plead with you today I plead with you the remedy is what give this tree a little time okay now look at what they say but he answered and said to them sir let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that, you can cut it down. So, I want you to give your marriage partner at least one year. Two of you should bring your marriage to God. Like this servant had bleeded with the master. He said, Master, do not cut down this tree. Allow me to do something. God is asking you to allow him to do something in your marriage. Do not go into divorce yet. You can cancel your appointment with the lawyer, with the divorce suit. Cancel your divorce suit. God is asking you by this admonition. Please, give me one year. <laughs> Let me touch your marriage. Let me touch your marriage. Are you willing to give God the time? I pray that God will give you understanding. As you bring your marriage to Him, you will see what God will do to His own glory. I want to pray for every marriage. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, I pray right now, committing every family in the whole world into your hand, irrespective of the marriage, irrespective of the religion. Lord, I pray that you begin to feast people's homes, especially the people who have come to acknowledge you, even the people who do not know you, but they are burdened in their heart, their heart, their conscious mind may not know you, may not know you in the way we know you in Christian community, but their heart longs for you, their heart is going around seeking help, Lord, may you be found by them, may you send people May you send your angels. May you manifest yourself unto them. And may you begin to face their marriages to the glory of your name. Be thou exalted, Lord God Almighty. 
In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And amen. Beloved brethren, God bless you all. On the third part, we will still continue on the remedy for the frustration of this husband man. Part 2. May God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, there you have that groundbreaking and eye-opening exposition of mystery. Okay? Remember to reach me at the comment section and do come back. Remember, we have seven different topics every week of the day. One again, identity, the difference ministry, health factors, the human heart cast, ministerial admonition, matrimonial admonition, and the love and romance. This is the best channel here on the planet Earth. You are never left wanting. Okay? May God bless you and keep you and help you. To find out your purpose here on the planet Earth to the glory of his name in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Remember that I love you.